He was the nephew of the younger nephew of Rupa Goswami and Sri Sanatan Goswami. So, there are only one uncle or anything else? Two uncles. They were not taught that knowledge in relation to their uncle. They were good. Good. So, you should tell them. Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Sanatana Goswami were the gurus of Srila Jiva Goswami. Srila Jiva Goswami uh, studied in Banaris, Srimad Bhagavatam, and then he came to Vrindavan, where he took shelter of Srila Rupa Goswami. And for many years he was assisting Srila Rupa Goswami in producing the literatures that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had instructed him to write. There's um, a story that one time when Srila Rupa Goswami was working on Srila ba uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and one very senior Vaishnava, Sri Balabharachari, he came there and Sri Rupa Goswami uh, offered him to look at what he was writing. And Balabharachari, he, he saw the um, script that Sri Rupa was working on. And he found some uh, problem, a small, he considered it not a mistake, but a a defect in the writing and he discussed with Rupa Goswami about this and Rupa Goswami very humbly uh, agreed to alter the text and then Sri Vadacharya he went to take his bath nearby in Jamuna and at that time Jiva Goswami he also went there and he questioned Balava Bhattacharya on why, how, how he could find some discrepancy in Sri Rupa Goswami's writings. And they had a very wonderful debate about the points that Sri Balava Bhattacharya was uh, noticing or was thinking that was defective. And Sri Jiva Goswami very... Uh, Shastrikli defeated Sri Balava Bhattacharya. And Balava Bhattacharya went back to Sri Rupa Goswami and humbly begged his pardon and said that he had such an elevated disciple in uh, Jiva Goswami. And that the defect that he pointed out was actually not a defect at all. And then when Jiva Goswami returned to Sri Rupa Goswami's Kutiya, Rupa Goswami was extremely angry that he should have questioned such an elevated Vaishnava. And he was so angry, in fact, with his young nephew, with his young disciple, that he told him to go from that place. He told him he was not qualified to stay with him, that he should leave. So Jiva Goswami, of course, was deeply smitten by this. So he left and he went to live in a crocodile hole near Nandagraf and he was crying very much and uh, 
after some period of time, Sri Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami's uh, associate, was passing by there, and the local people told him about this young sadhu who was weeping so much in this cave. And Sanatan Goswami immediately went there and found Jiva Goswami, and he brought him back to Sri Rupa Goswami. But there are many lessons in this pastime that took place that we should not question what the Guru is saying. Simultaneously, we should always defend what the Guru is also saying. So in actual fact, both Jiva Goswami, he did the right thing that he was supposed to do in defending his Guru, and Sri Rupa Goswami also correctly corrected him. So in both instances, both was uh, the correct thing to do. So Sri Jiva Goswami, he uh, being so much younger than Sri Rupa Goswami and Sri Sanatana Goswami, he took all the grantas, the, the, the scriptures that Sanatana Goswami, Hari Bhakti Vilas, and uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, uh, Vidata Madhava, Lalita Madhava, so many books that Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami had compiled, and he very carefully edited them, and he uh, published these books very nicely for Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami. So he was spending so much of his time when Srila Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami had departed from this world, then he was the Mahant, he was carrying on the line of the Goswamis. He was carrying on the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He became the Acharya when uh, his gurus left the planet. And he compiled all the literatures that were left. And he did so much literary work himself. He compiled these Sandarvas. There are six Sandarvas, a total commentary in incredible depth on Srimad Bhagavatam. This Tattva Sandhava, Priti Sandhava, Krishna Sandhava, all these different uh, 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 delineations on Srimad Bhagavatam. So this was his most voluminous work. Plus he wrote extensively on so many topics concerned with Rasa Tattva and Gyan Tattva. And at that time, uh, <coughs> being uh, the Mahant of Vrindavan, when Srila Narottam Das Tako came as a young boy to Vrindavan, he had run away from home, Srila Narottam Das Tako, and Srila Jiva Goswami, he gave him shelter at that time, and he introduced him to his guru, Sri Lokanath Goswami. So, we see Jiva Goswami was so important in compiling and uh, <coughs> collecting all these scriptures of Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Sanatana Goswami. And also he was assisted by Gopal Bhatta Goswami at that time. And uh, uh, Okay. Yes, so they speak on Jibushan. What he has said, Right. What he is told, can you repeat? Shrukarat, <laughs> 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 
कोई भी पाठ करे तुमको आना पड़ेगा कोई भी एक छोटा सा बच्चा चूहिया भी पाठ करे तभी आएगा ऐसा नहीं है वो हम सब जानते हैं जाओ बैठा छोड़ दिया नहीं तो तुमको पीटेंगे भी जाओ और कौन कर वेर इज प्रभु इज मैनेजिंग और यू आर मैनेजिंग कैन यू कम कौन कैन यू स्पीक ऑन जी गोस्वामी नथिंग तुमको पीट देंगे अभी कान काट देंगे सबके सामने सचमुच में तुम उठ करके बाप जो कुछ इतना हम तो पचास बारह बजे तक बोल रहे हैं है और सौ बजे तक डूब मारो तुम मारेंगे अच्छी तरह से सबके सामने गोर गोविंद जैसा लठिया देख तुम्हारे तैयार होते हैं तुम्हारे हरी कथा तो रुचि नहीं हरी कथा मैं तो रुचि ना आते तुम्हारे कोनो डगमग कर दो इंडिया बोले बांग्ला बोले उसको बोलते हैं बोले कि नहीं कहता हूँ बांग्ला में बोले वो इधर चल रहा पूरा नॉन सीनियर अभी कर सकते हैं सीनियर होने से वो करता है हाँ गो ठीक आज तक सुन भी शक I am not qualified to speak. The Guru Dev has ordered me. So, what are little, little I remember about Sri Jiva Goswami? I will try to uh, share that with you. Already, Nani Kapoor Prabhu, Nani Kishor Prabhu has talked extensively about him. What I remember, uh, Sri Guru Dev often has delivered. How the philosophy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has been uh, so much expertly handed down by the Goswami, the six Goswamis, especially Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Sanatan Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, they es- established what is Raghunuga Bhakti. Many of us. Have heard what is Raganuga Bhakti, the name, but what is it exactly? This has been clearly defined by Shri Rupa Goswami, and it has been more expertly presented by Shri Raganuga Das Goswami. Raganuga Bhakti is something which actually is the goal of all Gauriya Vaishnavas. That is why Shri Tanya Mahaprabhu came. He came. Especially to give the path of Raj Mark, Prem Raj Nirjas Korite Ashvadan, Raj Mark Bhakti Lope Korite Prakshanan, Parma Krishna, Rasik Sevika Krishna Parma Karu E Devi Hito Hoyte Ichchara Utam. There are two main reasons why Sri Tani Mahaprabhu came. One is to taste the essence. Of the modes of Sri Mati Radhika, what is it that she experiences when she is so much attracted to Krishna? The second thing, why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came is to give the path of Rag Mark. That is why he is called Paramakarun, most merciful. He is the most merciful incarnation or. non different actually from krishna descends once upon once in the day of var brahma to give that most <coughs> merciful thing which is the path of rag mark bhakti now shri rupa goswami shri ragnada goswami shri sanatan goswami they very nicely presented what is ragnada bhakti shri jiva goswami he expertly compiled 
we may say if Raak, Mark or the path of Raak and Rupa Bhakti is like a very strong and beautiful current, like a river, yeah, in order that it wouldn't get spoiled anywhere, Sri Jiva Goswami protected that river with all his literature, especially with the Sandarbhas. <coughs> Another thing which Namaki Prabhu touched briefly is that Srila Narottanda Stakur, Shamananda Prabhu and Srini Vasacharya, they all came to Vrindavan to study under Srila Jiva Goswami. They learned everything from Srila Jiva Goswami. He was their Shiksha Guru, Bhajan Shiksha Guru, everything he gave them. From this history, this event, we can understand that most important in the disciple and guru relationship is to hear from Gurudev, to hear his instructions, to hear his harikata, and to practice our bhajan under the guidance of our Gurudev. That is the meaning of the relationship between disciple and guru. After they were so qualified, then still they have not taken initiation, formal initiation. Sometimes we think, oh, I should take initiation, then everything will be all right. I will quickly make advancements. Then we take initiation from Gurudev. And after two weeks we think, oh, nothing happened. Maybe I should take a more mantras from Gurudev. Now I will ask him Diksha Mantra or I will ask him, go mantra, so that I can advance quickly. Yeah. <laughs> but understanding what really Diksha is, we have to study the life of our previous Acharyas. And in the history, in this example of Srila Jiva Goswami, giving all his Shiksha, all his heart to these three wonderful Acharyas in our line, yeah, shows us that this is the real meaning of Diksha. Then he told Jiva Goswami, told his disciple Narottam Dastakur, they wanted to take Diksha, and he said, you go to Lokanath Goswami, and you become his disciple, you take Diksha from him. So this example is a very uh, wonderful proof that what is the real meaning between disciple and Gurudev. Yeah. Although we may have Diksha Guru, so qualified, yeah. But unless we take sincerely all his instructions and we become very eager and inspired to know what is bhajan, how to do bhajan, what is sadhan, yeah. what are the teachings of our Goswamis, why Srila Jiva Goswami has come, Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Raghunadas Goswami, all our acharyas, what is so special, what they have brought. And then we see that by hearing these wonderful explanations in the proper way, in the proper association, our faith and our desire to serve Sri Guru and Vaishnavas will increase daily. One check out for the Rupa Sanskrit. Vindavan Bilasni will speak something. From there you can. Oh, I'm requesting you. Why you are keeping everything in your heart? You should try to present something. There's not so much more that I know about Jesus Goswami, except that um, with his uh, dear disciples of Srinivasacharya, Narakam Dasakur, and Shamananda Prabhu, he inspired them and ordered them to take the Goswami's literatures from Vrindavan and take them and take them uh, to Bengal and to Arusa and to different places. So we actually are very, very grateful to Jiva Goswami for sending out the first Sankirtan party, you might say, the first book distribution. So the whole world eventually would get the writings of the Goswami. So we're very Cheating. You are cheating us. <laughs> we want to hear from you. Knowing Krishna Brahmacharya.
they should come and So, today is disappearance day of Sula Jigva Samipad. Sula Guru ordered me discuss something about Jigva Samipad, his teachings and his literature, etc. So, Sula Jigva Samipad. If we want to know Jivya Sanipad, we have to go through his literature. So, Jivya Sanipad wrote so many books. Among so many books, is the most valuable is Sat Sandarva. Before Sula Jivya Sanipad, Sula Gopal Bhatta Goswami made it in condensed form. After that, Sula Jogu Goswami present it with commentary and as a sequence. The six Sandarvas are Tatta Sandarva, Paramatma Sandarva, Bhagavat Sandarva, Krishna Sandarva, Bhakti Sandarva, Priti Sandarva. Among these six, first four, first four Sandarvas are about to relationship. That means <coughs> Sammanagain Tatta Mula. Bhakti Sandarbha is for Abhidya Tatta and Priti Sandarbha for Prayam Tatta. In Tatta first Sandarbha is Tatta Sandarbha. He explained here about Pramanas, the ten Pramans means proofs to know the spiritual truth. Among these, Pratyaksha, Paraksha, Anuman, Aitijya, Sabda, etc. Among these, Sabda Pramanam, Mula Pramanam, the transcendental sound, then Sabda Praman is best Praman among all those Pramanas. Why Pratyaksha or Anuman? is not valid here because our senses are not quite perfect. Suppose you are suffering for jaundice disease and it is extremely <coughs> go up. Then if you are infected by jaundice disease, everything you can see yellow or everything will taste bitter taste. It not means that everything is bitter in this world and everything is yellow color. So, Pratyaksha Praman is not Praman. Another example Jeeva Swami has given in his Sandarva. That if too much cold, that means in winter season, if you passing through anywhere, if there is pond from far away, you can see the smoke is coming. You are inferencing that is Anuman Praman, why not? Valid here in for spiritual truth. That Anuman is inferencing that smoke is there. When you go nearer, you can see there is no smoke at all. Seeing that vapor, you are thinking smoke or fire must be there. Because Rajivya Sanipad and other philosophers explained Jatra Jatra Vanni Tatra Tatra Dhuma. If there is fire, if there is smoke, fire must be there. And if you are seeing this smoke, then fire must be there. 
you are feeling too much cold, you want to get some heat. When you, as soon as you arrive there, you can see that there is no fire at all, you could not get any heat, there is a lake. Due to winter, that vapor is coming. So, inference proof is also not valid. So, one after another, like Oitijja Praman, which he accepted from history, who wrote history at that time, his sense also not perfect, so he bound to write, he bound to write something wrong. So, it is also valid for spiritual truth. Why Sabda Pramanam, Mula Pramanam? Jibhu Sahibab is explaining here that Sabda Praman means all scriptures like Veda, Samad Bhagavatam, etc. We, it's come from our spiritual hierarchy, that means Guru Param Gada. At first, our Adi Guru, that means first Guru Brahma, get our transcendental knowledge from Krishna directly. After that, for Brahma, up to date, we are hearing from our Guru Varga, so this, this sound proof, Sabda Praman is valid here. Now, Sri Jigwe Sahipad explained about Praman in his Tattva Sandarva. And Sri Jigwe Sahipad cuts out Mayabad philosophy, Manism philosophy. According to Sankaracharya philosophy, Brahma Sattva, Jagan Mitha, Jiva Brahma Hiva Naparam, Brahma is true and this all is false and there is no difference between soul and super soul. So, Jibhusam is asking that Brahma Sattva Jagad Mitha. So, Brahma means Brinhati, Brinhati Cha, who is great, so big and who can make another also so great. It's called Brahma. So, Brahma is biggest in this universe. No one is equal to Brahma. Because according to scripture, we have seen Natas Sakarjam Karanancha Vidyate. Nakat samasya badika sadrishyate parasya saktiri vividhaiva sriyate sarabiki gyanavala kriyacha No one is equal to him or to save out more than him. So here Brahma is greatest, is biggest. So Jeeva is asking here that Brahma is universe, inside this universe or universe is inside Brahma. Even a monist replied that universe is inside Brahma. Or if the reply Brahma is, universe, Brahma is inside universe, then, Jibhas, then automatically their logic will be cutted down. How? So if universe is inside Brahma, then Brahma Sattva, which will be inside Brahma, it must be true. Brahma Sattva is Brahma true. If all will be inside Brahma, then it must be true. If you think, if they reply, no, 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 Brahma is inside universe, then they are telling Jagat Mitha, then universe is false, then Brahma must be false. Then if they go this side, yet their false. argument will be false, if they go another side, yet their argument will be false. So Jiva Saipar cutted their all arguments, all philosophy very easily. Now we are coming is Bhakti Sandarva Vidya Tattva. In Bhakti Sandarva, Srila Jivya Sahipad, after discussing so many tattvas, Jivya Sahipad is explaining in his Bhakti Sandarva that if you have no taste for Harikatha, especially you have no taste to hearing a Lila Katha of Krishna, then we have to suffer two ways. Then Jivya Sami is putting here about three, four examples. Just like someone is protecting one cow. What is the purpose? He wants to get milk. But if that cow has no calf, what will happen? Then he could not get any milk. So your desire to get milk, the desire will not be fulfilled, so you have to suffer. Another thing, that you have to protect that cow, so you have to suffer in two ways. After that, you will put another example. <coughs> if you have any disobedient son, 
then you have to suffer two ways. Son means according to Sanskrit, Putra. Putra means Punnama Naraka Trayate Ea Sa Putra. There are so many types of hell, hellish planet. So if father or if parents, they not do any good act activity, they want to go hellish planet. If there is son, he makes some Sraddha ceremony and he will give some pinda by that they can remove from that hellish planet. So putra means punna manara katrayate iya sa putra. So is disobedient son. So if you nourish any disobedient son, you have to suffer two ways. Because son must be carried out father's order or mother's order, but he disobedient, he is not obey, he is not care for order of parents. So you have so many pain in your heart that my son, I am protecting, nourishing him, but he is not care for me. Then you are suffering one way, another way. After your departure, that he will give Sardha ceremony will do, there is no certainty. So you have to suffer another way. So Jibuga Sam is giving so many examples. In Bhakti Sandarbha, Sila Jibuga Sam explain about Guru Tattva, who is Guru? Guru must be realized so and must be expert in all scriptures. Any kind of question, any kind of doubt of his disciple, he can remove immediate. So if he is expert in scriptures, but he is not realized so, then Srila Jiva Sahipad is telling, Jhadhanu Miva Rakshata, that means without cup you protect any cow, then you could not get me. Similarly, even a scholar, but he has not realized soul, he is not qualified for a guru, one of that guru. Now Jiva Sahipad is explaining about Kalishta Vaishnav, Madhyam Vaishnav, Uttam Vaishnav. Explaining all these things, he is telling that Uttam Vaishnav also three types. <coughs> Murchit Kasar, Nirdhut Kasar, Prakta Parsad, Bhagavad Deha. So Jibya Sebad is giving example here about Murchit Kasar. That means there is some Kasar, means there is some little fault but latent position. When Narodisi took Darshan of Bhagavan, after that he wants to be in forest and want to do bhajan being in forest. He has some desires and I shall stay in forest. I shall do in Sakti Givas. So, when we shall advance, we have to be sundered ourselves completely. Which our Guru and Vaishnava God wants, we shall do this. But Narodrisi here wants by himself to live in forest. So, it is called Murchit Kasai, there is some keen desire. Nirdhut Kasai, there is no fault at all. Like Sukhdev Gasangpa, everything was out. After that, when Narodasi became associate of God, then he is wandering anywhere else, any Vaikunda planet, in this planet, anywhere he can go. So, here he can go anywhere. When it's who we were associate body, he can go anywhere. Like Bhagavan, whenever you want. He can, Bhagavan can incarn, Bhagavan can descend any planet. Similarly, who got associate body, he can go anywhere else, any planet, wherever he likes. So it is called Bhagavad Parsal, Prapta Bhagavad Parsal Deha. Now we are coming to Priti Sandarbha. In this material world, we have so many, too much attachment for our body. Who is related with the body, we have so much affection for this. So, Jeeva Sankar is explaining in Tata Sam, Priti Sandarva, that Visayaje Priti Eve Achayamar, Sei Mata Priti Ho Charane Tamar. So, Jeeva Sankar explains one slope in Priti Sandarva. Visay Sona Payani, Ja Priti Aviveki Nam Visay Sona Payani. Just like this Aviveki, that an ignorant person, they have so much affection or attraction for their body and bodily matter. So we have to be such kind of affection, that means we have so much attraction for that thing, we have to 
turns power attraction for God, for Bhagavan. Then Bhagavan will be merciful, best way is mercy and he will be controlled by such kind of devotee. So, Srila so Jeeva Sampad explain all these things because that none can make any calamity any bad thing in this uh, in this idea of in this concept, question of conception. Just like I not to give you an example, if there is any river, if any bad water comes from other side, then it will be dirty. So like our bhakti dhara, it is like current, this flowing so strongly. If any other conception come and mix with this current, then this will be amalgamated with that conception. So Jeeva Samipa concrete is two sides with this Satsandargos. That any bad idea, any bad conception must not be amalgamated with this bhakti current. And Jeeva Samipa is Gopal Champu. If you go to Gopal Champu, sometimes it looks like that Jiva Sampad is preaching Sakyoga. <coughs> so in Bhakti Vedasakar is Jaiva Dharma. Vijay Kumar is asking to his Gurudev, Oh Gurudev, why Jiva Sampad preach everywhere in his books Sakyoga? Then Sila Guru Goswami is replying, No. Jeeva Sanipad, his eternal associate of Sri Rupa Sanipad, he is best preacher of Raganga, Raganga, Padraga Marga. Externally it looks like Sakyava. Why so? Then Vijay Kumar is asking, why so? Jeeva Sanipad saw everything in his vision, then in the future maybe bad conception come and mix with this. So he wrote in his Sandarbhas. Secha likitam kinchit, kinchit likitam parechaya. Something I am writing by myself, that means Raganga Marga. And parecha means I am writing something which is not, un, not qualified for them. Now Jeeva Goswami is explained like this way. So Jeeva Goswami is disciple of Rupa Goswami. So he could not preach against Sri Rupa Goswami Pad. So, Rupa Sahibad's idea and Srila Jeeva Sahibad's idea is same. Srila Guru has given so many, so many times an example about Dhamdhan Lila. When Nan Jasodama tightened Krishna with grinder mortar, after that Mother Jasoda went away for household work because time had been passed. So he, she bound to cook, she has to chant yogurt again. Then all boys came, Krishna's friend. When Mother Jasoda went away, they are laughing too much. Oh Kanaya, today is very good, Mother has given you a very good lesson. Every day you still here and there. Now, Mother, give, Mother Jasoda has given you a good lesson. And Krishna also laughing and all boys are laughing. Krishna is telling, we can, we shall play, we shall go out. And Krishna is pulling their binder mortar and boys are pushing their mortar. When they came, the courtyard of Nanda Baba, there is two origin tree. Then Krishna remember one <coughs> thing. What thing? Sakta vidhatum niyavitta bhasitam. Now, Jamal Arjun, they are son of Kuber. Kuber means predominating deity of oil. Their name was Nalkuber and Monitri. So, some of other Naradrisi cursed them. So, they became tree. Now, Krishna remember, oh, my devotee Naradrisi cursed them and benedict them also. That Krishna will come in Dapar Juga and he will rescue you. So I have to be fulfill my bhakta's desire. So he came. The boys are pulling and his boys are pushing and he's pulling. The, the twin tree was like this way. Their root was in one and their trunk and branches was 
like this. So when Krishna come through, that Ganada stuck on that twin tree. And Krishna is pulled so strongly that Krishna is Okay? Krishna is human. Krishna is pulling. Krishna is, Krishna is pulling, he was pulling. Krishna was pulling so strongly. Easy what? Hmm. <coughs> the twin tree fell down with a tremendous sound. Whoever or higher? They said, from where sound is coming? Here is the sound everywhere went to that sound. Nandava came and untied that Krishna's rope and asked him, who tied you? Krishna is sobbing. He don't want to say anything. When Nanda was asking again and again, then he replied very subtly, Mother. Nanda came, Nanda gave him some laddu. Yet Krishna is serving after that. Nanda went to bathing place of Jamuna and he gave bath to Krishna and he took bath himself and came back with Baladev and Krishna. All mothers of brothers, they are thinking that if Krishna will not come to Jasada's lair, then Jasada may die. So, wife of Bananda is Tungi, is, her name was Tungi. He is asking, will not come? No. To whom will you play? With my father and Dalbhaiya. I will sleep with my father. Will not go? Mm -hmm. No. Then Rohini mother, mother Rohini is telling, if your mother will, that means you die. Then Krishna could not check himself. He spread his arms. Maya Maya want to eat. He began to eat bitterly. Then Rohini Devi took Krishna and kept on Mother Jasada's lap. Hearing this, Lila from Guru's mouth or Paranga also could not check himself. So Jigva Saipad explained this past times in his Gopal Champu. And so Jigva Saipad composed one Sanskrit grammar, it is called Harinama Amrita Vakaran. As before Jigva Sami, there are Panini, so many grammar book is available. But no one explained according to Jigva Saipad. Jigva Saipad explained all condensed form according to Bhagavad Tattva is all condensed form. Srila so, Jigvasa explained himself. Every here is the name of Vishnu. Krishna, Madhav, Govinda, like this way. So, Jigvasa has another book also, Madhav Mahatsav, and so many books are there. He comments so many commentary in Srimad Bhagavatam, Vaishnata Sani Tika, Srila Jigvasa, Vyad Vaishnata Sani, his Logu Vaishnata Sani, and Kram Sandhava Tika. And he commentary also for Ujjal, he comment also for Jib, make one commentary, made one commentary for Ujjal Nirmani, Lochan Lochan Itika and Bhakti Sandhu, Sindhu, so many he did in his life. So if anyone want to enter in Krishna pastime, they have to know at first about Siddhanta. So Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur Prabhupada told, Siddhanta Valiya Chitte Nakara Alas Jahaite Krishna Lage Sudhira Manas If you want to fix your mind a lotus feet of Krishna then you have to know at first on Siddhanta otherwise your mind will not be fixed So Jiva Sankar in one hand he explained so many Siddhanta and other hand Krishna's very sweet pastime So with our own effort we could not enter there So we prayed Albasnavas and Lotus Pita Guru Padma and I pray to you all, please bless to your mercy. Then under the guidance of Guru Padma, I can understand Sri Goswami theory and I can serve Hari Guru Goswami eternally. Bancha Kalvataru Bhastra Kripas and the Hari Guru Pantana Mutari. What 
Namin told, you should note down all the points and tell me what Namin told, one by one, all points. <coughs> In brief, I should repeat what Namin Krishna would say. No, no, yes, sir. That's a question. What do you know? Pranatvarandasya Gananda Nasyaka Chakshuramitani Svaisivari Don't do... Shila Jiva Goswaka Swamipani has been uh, glorified by Srinivasa Charini. Nana Shasta Vicharana Kinipano Sadhanama Samastapako Lokanam Hitakarino to Buddhaim and Yosham Yakaro Radha Krishna Kadara Vindu Bajanan and Dana Nata Liko One day Rupa Sanatana Vidiva Shri Jeeva Gopalako Nana Shasta Vicharana Kinipano the Goswamis, they were so expert in analyzing all of the Vedic scriptures uh, in order to establish the uh, Sanatana Dharma and Bhakti and especially Prema Dharma, the uh, Jaiva Dharma, the religion of the soul, to uh, engage in the loving service, Shishi Radha Krishna Yuga. So, Srila Jiva Goswami, he was the son of Anupam. And when Srila Rupa Goswami, he left his home, then at that time he had so much wealth. He was a very wealthy person. So half of that wealth he distributed to Brahmanas, Vaishnava Brahmanas, and who were qualified. And half he kept for an emergency to, uh, which was used, it was kept with the shopkeeper and it was used to help Sanatana Goswami bribe his jailkeeper and escape from jail. And the other quarter of his wealth was given to his family. So why did he give this wealth to his family? Because at that time, Srila Jiva Goswami was a small baby and he gave this uh, money so that Srila Jiva Goswami could get a very good education. So Srila Jiva Goswami received very good education and uh, he became the only uh, initiated disciple of Srila Rupa Goswami. Srila Rupa Goswami, he gave Diksha to only one personality, that was Srila Jiva Goswami. Yet, very prominent in the line of Srila Jiva Goswami are his three uh, prominent disciples, Shamananda Prabhu, Srinivasacharya, and uh, Narottam Das Thakur. These are his very inti intimate disciples, yet he has not given them diksha uh, in, according to the Panchayatric process. The Shamananda Pandit, his diksha guru was uh, Pridai Chaitanya. And Srinivasacharya, his diksha guru was Gopal Bhatta Goswami. And Narayatam Das Thakur, his diksha guru was Lokanath Goswami. Yet their primary relationship was with Srila Jiva Goswami because he was their Bhajan Shikshi Guru. So they are considered to be in the Prampara of Srila Jiva Goswami. This is called Bhagavat Prampara. It is based not on uh, the giving of mantra, but rather it is based on proficiency in Bhajan. Srila Jiva Goswami was not only learned in all Siddhant, but he was very Rasik Vaishnava. And uh, we know from our acharyas that he is no ordinary personality, but a very dear, intimate maidservant of Srimati Radhika. Um, Sri Vilas Manjari descended into this world and uh, performed pastimes as Srila Jiva Goswami. And therefore, he was able to write such uh, exalted scriptures and descriptions of Krishna Lila, such as we've just heard from Sriman. Navin Krishna Guru from Sri Gopal Champu.
So Srila Jiva Goswami Pad, from his very young age, he was so brilliant. And I would like to describe something of the, some of the details of the pastime already described by Sri Madhukishwa Prabhu. When Vallabhacharya came to Vrindavan and met with Srila Jiva Goswami, Srila Vallabhacharya was at that time very great, respected and senior to other Vaishnavas. And at that time Srila Rupa Goswami was writing and his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And in this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he has written a verse, Bhukti Mukti Spriyajavat Tisachi Rinivartate, that the desire for Bhukti and the desire for Mukti, that means the desire for sense enjoyment and the desire for liberation, are like witches. While those desires are there, then Bhakti will never enter the heart. This is the teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Taramadde Mukti Bancha Kaitava Pradhan Jahaite Bhakti Devi Hoi Antadhyan That of all types of cheating, the desire for liberation is a supreme type of cheating. Why? Because it is directly opposed to the eternal intrinsic swarup, the nature of the jiva, which is to Jiva Swarupai Krishna and Nityadas. So, if anyone has a desire for liberation, then Bhakti Devi immediately flies from that person and disappears. So, Srila uh, <coughs> Rupa Goswami had written this. When Vallabhacharya approached him, he asked, Oh, what are you writing? Can I see? And upon seeing what Srila Rupa Goswami had written, he didn't say anything, but he just said, Oh, can you give this to me for proofreading? I will, he offered to proofread it. And Rupa Goswami, he was so... Uh, happy, yes, you, you, you can proofread it. Then, Sri Vallabhacharya, he went to the Yamuna to take bath. Upon seeing this, Srila Jiva Goswami could understand the heart of Vallabhacharya, that he had seen something which he thought was uh, inc incongruous with the Siddhant. So, on some pretext, Srila Jiva Goswami took permission from Rupa Goswami and went to the Yamuna. So, Srila Jiva Goswami then questioned um, Sri Vallabhacharya, it, you have said that you want to proofread the writings of Srila Rupa Goswami. He is perfect personality, all of his words are perfect. This is the speciality of the writing of Rupa Goswami. The writings of Rupa Goswami are not any theory, but he has first realized everything and practiced everything himself, and then he has written. So knowing this, Srila Jiva Goswami said, have you seen? that there was any fault there. Sri Vallabhacharya said, you should know that um, yogis and also many great personalities, they perform austerities for thousands of years to get the mercy of Mukti Devi, the goddess of liberation. Therefore, to call Mukti Devi a witch, this is quite inappropriate. So Sri the Jiva Goswami, he, de he described that, um, my dear sir, my Gurudev has not written that Mukti Dev is a witch, but Bhukti Mukti Spriha, the desire for Mukti is like a witch which haunts the heart. Hmm? Which man? Upon hearing this, then Sri Vallabhacharya was speechless. And he, when he returned to the company of Srila Rupa Goswami, then he commented that, oh, you have such a learned and qualified and brilliant young disciple. Hmm? Even he was not disturbed. Huh? He is very. He is a, a pure devotee. He was not disturbed, and generally he glorified Sri Jiva Goswami huh? uh, in the presence of Sri Rupa Goswami. But Sri Rupa Goswami could understand that Sri Jiva Goswami had shown his erudition and his uh, uh, skill and. Um, his quality, his vast, the quality of his vast learning in the presence of a superior. So in spiritual life, to make a show of one's learning in the presence of one's superiors is very, very uh, uh, bad. This is quite offensive. So Srila Rupa Goswami, later meeting with Srila Jiva Goswami, he told him that you are not qualified to stay in Vrindavan. 
Anyone who takes pleasure in humiliating others or takes pleasure in asserting their own self-worth is not fit to reside in Vrindavan. Therefore you should leave. So Srila Jiva Goswami, the words of his guru struck him like a thunderbolt. Yet he could not disobey them. So he went to the outskirts of Vrindavan and there he lay down in a cave. Uh -huh. And day and night he was crying, crying, Ha Rupa, Ha Rupa, Ha Gurudev of my Prabhu. And crying without giving up eating, giving up sleeping. Mm -hmm. So here we find the <coughs> epitome of the bona fide disciple. Shri Guru Charani Rati Aise Uttamagati. The highest goal is to have the, the sublime, incessant rati, deep attachment for the lotus feet of Sri Guru. When at the time of the Ras mm, Lila, then we see, uh, sorry, when Uddhav came to Vrindavan, then he had a conversation with the gopis. And in this conversation, the gopis described what is the meaning of uh, hate to pray and a hate to pray. Love which has cause and love which is without a cause. Mm -hmm. So there are many examples of the hate to pray, love which has a cause. Mm -hmm. For example, the bird will live in the tree, or the deer will live in the forest, or the bumblebee has a relationship with the flower, or a, a prostitute has a relationship with her client, or a student has a relationship with the teacher. But these relationships, they're all hate to. They all have a cause. And because there's a cause for this relationship, therefore, when that cause disappears, then the relationship also disappears. Mm -hmm. The love which has a cause uh, is what at some point in time will be broken. So when the bee has drunk the honey from the flower and there's no more honey in the flower, then he will leave the flower. The bird will be attracted and have a relationship with the tree. But if the tree catches fire, then the bird will leave. The deer has a relationship with the forest, but if the forest is destroyed and becomes black and dry by a forest fire, then the deer will have no relationship with the forest fire. The prostitute will have an affection for her client, but when his money runs out, she will kick him. And the student will have a relationship with the teacher. But when his education is complete, then he will give up the teacher. So that love which has any cause will one day be broken. But that love which is causeless, which has no cause, will never be broken. So, in the same way, the love of the Satsisha for the sad guru, it has no cause. It is pure and unconditional love, so it can never be broken. So even though Srila Rupa Goswami, he spoke very, very uh, harsh words to Jiva Goswami. And even though Jiva Goswami was right, he was correct to maintain the prestige of his spiritual master in the face of one who had found some fault in his writings. So Jiva Goswami was not at fault. So even though he wasn't at fault and he was sent away by Rupa Goswami, still his love for his Gurudev was not diminished, but rather it increased more and more. And he was lying in the cave crying, Ha Gurudev, Ha Gurudev, over and over again, giving up all eating and sleeping, and he was prepared to die and give up his life. <laughs> when Srila Sanatana Goswami came to hear that Jiva Goswami was living like this in a cave. Then he went to Srila Rupa Goswami and he said, Oh Rupa, it appears that you have forgotten the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. So Srila Rupa Goswami said, How is that? So then he said, He told him, You should remember the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So then Srila Rupa Goswami, he began to remember the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu one by one. And when he came to the teaching, uh, Jiva Doya, one should be merciful to the jivas. One should show mercy on the living souls. Then he realized, Jiva Daya. I, I should show my mercy, not on the jiva, but on Jiva Goswami. Like this. And then his heart melted, and he sent for Jiva Goswami, and Srila Jiva Goswami, and his beloved Gurudev. They were uh, very ecstatically reunited. So from this we can see, what is the quality? What is the heart? What is the deep attachment within the heart of the Satsisha? for his Guru Dev. And therefore, he was completely empowered by Srila Rupa Goswami to compile such wonderful Shastras, such as the Sandarbhas, in which he has defined, uh, given so many definitions 
in such a way that no one can ever find any loop or hole in the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. In his uh, Tattva Sandarbha, he, as Sriman uh, Naveen Krishnamu has already described, he has spoken about Praman Tattva. Mm -hmm. If we want to get knowledge of the truth, then from where will we attain this knowledge? What is actually reliable? And then having established that the really reliable authority is Shabda Praman. In other words, the transcendental sound which is embodied in the Shastra coming in Parampara, then he goes on to establish something more, a further teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What teaching is that? Srimad Bhagavatam Pramanam Amalam Prema Kumato Mahan. That the topmost Praman, the highest evidence, is the evidence of Srimad Bhagavatam. He has described that Shabda Praman is the best. But there are so many types of Shabda Praman. All Veda, Upanishad, Puranas, Vedanta, and so many things have been given by Srila Vyasadeva. But if we examine all of them, then we will see that in the Vedas there is the Karma Kanda and Jnana Kanda, and in the Puranas there are Puranas which are Sattvic, uh, for those in Sattvagun, Rajagun, and Tamagun. So it is not that in every Shastra the ultimate conclusion has been given. But having compiled all the Vedic literatures, then Swami Bhagavan himself appeared uh, in this world as uh, Krishna Dvaipayam Vyas. And in his uh, maturity, when he was uh, under the guidance of his Gurudev, Nag Muni, he has compiled the ultimate Praman, and that is Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srila Jiva Goswami has established very methodically and systematically uh -huh. and irrefutably the conclusion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Srimad Bhagavatam Pramanam Amalam that the Srimad Bhagavatam is the supreme evidence and supreme <coughs> scriptural authority uh -huh. Srila Jiva Goswami in his uh, Bhakti Sandarbha he has described very important things for the Sadhak what is that? in Sadhana Bhakti, in Bhakti then the first thing is Sri Guru Padashwaya. One must take shelter of a bona fide guru. So Srila Jiva Goswami has explained what is bona fide guru. In Srimad Bhagavatam is written Tasmat Gurum Kapadyeta Jigyashu Sai Uttamam Shabde Parita Nishnatam Brahmanu Pasamasrayam. But who is bona fide guru? The bona fide guru, he has the. If one wants to know what is the absolute truth, if one is interested in the ultimate benefit of his life, then he must surrender at the lotus feet of a bona fide guru. But who is a bona fide guru? The, the sad guru, he has three qualities. Shabde, Parekta, Nishnatam, Brahmanu, Parashim, Of these three qualities, two of the qualities are the uh, Swarupalachana, the inherent characteristic of the guru. And the, uh, another quality is the Tathastalachana, the external characteristic of the Guru. That is, that uh, Brahmanu Parashamasrayam, he is completely detached from uh, the material sense gratification. But there are other personalities practicing yoga and gyan. They also manifest some detachment. So what is actually the symptom of the bona fide Guru? Shabde Parita Nishna Atam. So in his country, Srila Jiva Goswami, he wrote, Shabde Brahmani Veda Tatpariyena Vicharena Nishnatam that what is the meaning of the word Shabde? That he is he knows all of the conclusions and can establish all of the conclusions of the Veda by deliberation. And he has the power to convince others of those conclusions. And then Shabde Pareta Nishnatam. What is Pare? Srila Jiva Goswami wrote. Mm. Pare Brahman Brahmani. Bhagavat Rupa Abhibhar Vestu Aparokshanu Bhavena that the sad guru he has realization of Bhagavan. He is Tatna Darshi. He is a seer of the truth. He has had the darshan of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the sad guru. So this verse was written in Srimad Bhagavatam thousands of years before by Srila Vyasadeva. And Srila Jiva Goswami has commented on this explaining the true meaning of this verse. Mm -hmm. But in the now, in, since the time of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the qualification of the Sad Guru is even higher than this. Uh, what is that? Nikunji Yuno Ratikali Siddhya 
Yayali Biryuk Tira Pekshinia, Tata Reduction, Atibala Bhasya, Vande Guru Sri Tarna Ravinda. Sad Guru is very, very dear to Sri Sri Radha and Krishna because he is so expert in assisting them in making tasteful arrangements for the loving affairs of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna within the Kunjas of Vrindavan. So, Srila Jiva Goswami, in his Bhakti Sandarbha, he has also explained uh, what is uh, Diksha. Because in this world we see many types of Diksha, such as the, um, the up, uh, Upanayan ceremony given to boys when they come of the eight, some slight maturity, then they will accept some Diksha from their Kula Guru. Mm -hmm. This type of initiation, this is not the um, uh, Daksha Janma, birth by Vaishnav initiation. The birth by Vaishnava initiation has been described by Srila Jiva Goswami in his Bhakti Sandarbha. Dibhyam jnanam ito dadya kuriyat pavapasya samsayam tasmat dikshayati sapokta deshikais tatvako vidai. That diksha is a process. It is a, the process whereby divyam jnanam ito dadya. The divya jnan, transcendental knowledge, is imparted to the disciple and Kuryat Papa Sasanchayam. That's all the path, all the sinful reactions, and the cause of sinful actions, which is avidya, ignorance of one's identity, this is all taken away. So, furthermore, Srila Jiva Goswami, he has explained what is Divyam Jnanam. Because many people, especially today, will see what is the meaning of transcendental knowledge. They will tell you the meaning of transcendental knowledge, Divya Jnan. The Guru, he gives you Divya Jnan. What is that? He tells you. You are not the body. You are in the cycle of birth and death. You will have to undergo reincarnation in this world. There are three modes of material nature, and Krishna is above these. And you are his servant. Like this, that this is the Divya Gyan. But what it, does Jiva, Srila Jiva Goswami say? He gives a definition. Divya Gyan and Kyatramanta Shimati, Bhagavat Srup Gyanatena, Bhagavat Sambandha Vishesh Gyanam Tya. The Guru gives Divya Gyan, transcendental knowledge. What is, what is that transcendental knowledge? It is the knowledge of the Swarup of Bhagavan, given in form of the mantra. Mm -hmm. And along with that, uh, Bhagavat Swarup Gyan Tena, Bhagavat Sambana Vishes Gyanam Cha. And by Diksha, the Guru, he gives one the transcendental knowledge of one's own specific, eternal relationship with the Shishi Radha Krishna Yuga. This is Divya Gyan. So this is Vishesh. a What is the meaning of Vishesh? Bhagavat Sambandha Vishesh Gyanam Cha. Bhagavat Sambandha means the relationship with Bhagavan. And Vishesh means particular. The one special particular relationship uh, with the Supreme Personality of God. What is that? What is that particular? Relation. Relation. So, in the general, in the general sense, every uh, jiva is related to Krishna. How? Jivaera Swarupai, Krishnaera Nitya Das. We're all the eternal servants of Krishna. Yet, uh, this is the general information. But the specific information is what, what is my uh, eternal uh, service, the mood of my service, and all of the uh, um, transcendental qualities which are there in the latent position within the Swarupa of the jiva. So the jiva, the there, general sadhak, there must be in all jivas. They have a special kind of relation with Krishna. Some they are related to friendship. Some they have a relation like Krishna is my son. That is Basal Labu. And some are related with Krishna, like Krishna is my beloved. So all the jivas have their own soul. By constitution, it is covered. Guru knows this relation. What is the relation between Krishna and Jiv, the special Jiv? And then he, by mantra, he gives this relation. Uh, special relation to that. Mm -hmm. So this is Vishesh Sambandha. Mm -hmm. So, in this way, 
Srila Jiva Goswami has given such essential knowledge uh, for the benefit of everyone in this world. Now it is eight. Hmm. Very good. What Jeeva Swami was right hmm? that he cut at the argument of Balavacha hmm? and he defended his word. But what about Rupa Goswami? He was right or no? Why? If J. Goswami was right, then he must be wrong. Mm -hmm. eh? How he was right? Mm -hmm. Because he is Guru, he has the um, ad Adhikar that he can give the... <coughs> oh, this is not argument. Mm -hmm. This is not... Rup Goswami is Guru, he is like Trinagopi, Sunijana, Tararupi, Suhisnuna, Omanina, Manodina. He wants to respect everyone. But Jibwa Jibwa Sai Pak, he could not tolerate. This is not they, also lovely. He came up slowly. This is not also lovely. He wanted to increase the love of Srila Jiva Goswami by uh, putting him in separation. No. <laughs> Rupu Swami can respect Balabhaja. And he wanted to respect him. So in front of him, his disciple, his disciple Jiva Goswami is disrespecting him. Oh, this is wrong. That Balabhacha may think that, oh, Rupa Goswami is not disrespecting me. Oh, actually, uh, Rupa Goswami is this. Through him. So it comes from Rupa Goswami. So Rupa Goswami was given respect to Balabhacha. Uh, by giving punishment to Jiva Goswami. He is right to this point. But Jiva Swami is right that any disciple should not be here anything against his Guru Dev. So Jiva Swami was also right. And also Rupa Goswami was right. <coughs> he wanted to respect Balabhacha. Huh? <coughs> so he was doing so. So both were right. Where this, when, where Jiva Goswami went after, Rupa Goswami told that you should go from here. Where? Where mm -hmm. down? Nanda Ghat. Nanda Ghat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, Jiva Goswami, he is like a brilliant star or intellectual giant in our disciple line. He is the greatest touchers in our Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. His designation is not that he is son of Anupam, but he is disciple of Rupa Goswami. Don't tell this. If you are explaining so much, then you can tell. But we can tell that, oh, Ji Goswami is disciple of <coughs> Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami. This is his glory. 
ग्लोरिफिकेशन अदरवाइज नो प्रभुपाद भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी ठाकुर इज सन ऑफ भक्ति मिलो ठाकुर दिस इज नॉट ग्लोरिफिकेशन ऑफ शिल प्रभुपाद हे डिसाइपल ऑफ गौरकिशोर दास बाबा जी महाराज एंड ऑल्सो भक्ति मिलो ठाकुर रियली इज द डिसाइपल ऑफ भक्ति मिलो ठाकुर But in line we tell like this that he is disciple of Gosu Shukdas Baba Ji. Bhakti Nathakur was his Bhagavat Parampara Guru, Bhagavat Guru, Shaman Guru, Bhajan Guru, everything. And Gosu Shukdas Baba Ji was Mantra Guru like Diksha Guru. So sometimes Bhagavat. Parampara Guru, Bhajan Guru is more superior. And if Diksha Guru is also Bhajan Guru, then he is so much higher. So, Jeeva Goswami is a very brilliant and very scholar, Acharya in Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya, Vaishnava, Sampradaya. He was a baby child when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to go in Vrindavan and Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami met in Kanai Nath Sala in the way of Vrindavan. At that time Jeeva Goswami was a baby and Rupa Sanatana brought that baby and gave it to the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <coughs> he touched like a very little baby. You know? But Jeeva Goswami never reminded this that so vividly. He has a very vague idea that he has touched the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <coughs> he told that how Rupa Goswami managed his uh, study. He gave so much money to the house that they should help Jeeva Goswami study. So he in boyhood, he became very big scholar in Sanskrit and Bengali, also in Urdu and Arbi Farsi. He was unparalleled learned person in Sanskrit, especially in grammar. When he became about 12 or 16 is as it, then he left his home and came to Navadhi. At that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has left this world. Sachi Maya was there and Vishnu Priya was there. Nityananda Prabhu was there. But all weeping for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jeeva Goswami came there and Sri Nityananda Prabhu kept his feet on the head of Jeeva Goswami. And he inspired everything in the heart of Jeeva Swami. All tattva, everything. Then he began to cry for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jeeva Swami told, come with me and I will take you to Parikrama of 16 crosses of now Deep Mandal. And he took him with him and he took him in nine islands of Now Deep. Antar Deep, Shiman Deep, Gautam Deep, Madhva Deep, Kol Deep, Ruti Deep, Janu Deep, Madhram Deep and Avitra. He especially showed him Mayapur, Jogpeet, And then 
He told that I want to be here in your lotus feet. But Nityananda Prabhu told that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had told that I am giving you all Rupa Goswami and all your family to Vrindavan. So you should go to Vrindavan to Rupa and Siddha Sanatana Goswami. And he told that in the way you will go to Baranasi and there you should learn so many things. Vedanta Darshan and all the the uh, the explanations of Shankar, Madhva, Vishnu Swami, Nimbadik, Sri Ramanuya Acharya. And then you should go to Vrindavan. So he went to Kashi and there was a disciple of Sarbham Bhattacharya. His name was Madhusudan Vidyabhachaspati. He had learnt everything and he studied all Vedanta from Sarbham Bhattacharya. What Sarbham Bhattacharya had received from Sai Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, that's Masudan Vidya Vachaspati taught him everything. And when he was the expert in all these things, who went to Vrindavan, to Rupa and Goswami and Sanatha Goswami. And he took shelter in the lotus feet of Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami. And Sanatan Goswami told that you should initiate. <coughs> so Rupa Goswami initiated this boy G. Goswami. And he taught him what he has written. What he has written? Bhakti Goswami, Sindhu, Ujjwal, Hindmani. And all his books like the Dagdh Madhav, Lalit Madhav, and so many books. That is a Rasa Shastra. Hmm? So, he met so much a scholar in a Rasa Shastra also. Hmm? And then he was fully hmm. master of all these things. Rupa Goswami told him that you should check grammatical mistakes if there are in my books. You should compile and you should read proof, proofread. <coughs> and he used to do. And at that time, one day, Balabhacharya came. That they had told the stories. <coughs> really? Uh, Rupa Goswami was so much acquainted with Srila Balavacharya because he has met once in his his own native place Adai Gram near Prayag. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there with Rupa and Anupam and that very good discourses to place. Hmm? So he knew, he used to know. So he told that, are you writing some any book? Oh, he told, yes, I am writing. What book you are writing? Then he told, at Bhakti Rasamit Singh. Oh, very good. May I see? Then he told, you can see. Then he, he took the book and he was seeing, seeing and he saw that as slope, bhakti mukti is priya and that he explained. Really mukti is not which, which but the spriha, the desire to have, this is like which. Balabhacharya had not understood this 
But Jee Goswami, being a little boy of 16 years, and he what, taught Balavacha, and then Balavacha was so much Uh, impressed by him. Impressed. Impressed. Yeah. And then he went to Siddhartha and told, Oh, your disciple is so learned. But he thought that he has defended him. He told that you should be tolerant. Yeah. Why? He, he is a Brahmin, learned, and he is also Vaishnava. And he is with me. And you connect all right, even that he is telling that I will correct. So for the Rupa Goswami it is correct. But for Ji Goswami it was not correct. Because anyone was defending his, um, was correcting his Gurudev. But Rupa Goswami was not a Vaishnava like this. He was the associate of Radha and Krishna, of Vrindavan. He cannot do any mistake. So he <coughs> argued some points and he defeated Pallavacha. It was right. If anyone is cutting or Gurudev anything, writing, any teaching, then we must do like this. But when we are in the position of Prabhu Goswami, then we should honor. That you can correct, no harm. For Vaishnava. So, Prabhu Goswami, he was not angry from heart, but he showed some anger like this. And he told that to me. Then when Sanatan Goswami heard this, he became so worried. And he went to that place. All the villagers came to Sanatan Goswami and told, Oh, a new Baba has come here. Though the age is so young, but always weeping, crying in the love of Krishna. Oh Krishna, oh Radhe, Radhe, doing and weeping day and night. He is more uh, qualified than you also. The villager began to Then he thought that, oh, it. He must be Jeeva Goswami. Jee. Jee. So he came to Jeeva Goswami and saw that he was about to die. He gave up. He had gave up taking anything. No bath, nothing. Always weeping, weeping, weeping for Gurudev. So Sanatana Goswami took him with him and he kept anywhere hidden in Vrindavan. And he came to Chilaru. What is our duty to all jivas? Souls. Soul means jiv. Then he told that jive daya we should be very kind to jivas. All jivas. Then this jiv is not jivas. Ji, hmm? why you are so much unkind to this Ji? Hmm? Then he began to be for Jai. Then he called Ji and he gave Ji in the lap of Rup Goswami. And Rup Goswami Singh Ji, that he was about to die. So many diseases were there. Hmm? And he was to die. Then Rup Goswami embraced him and he nursed him. He took medicine and he gave medicine and 
again he was nourishing him. After some time, he became pure. And then Jivushami always serving <coughs> When Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami left this world, he was the prominent acharya of Vishwa, Vaishnava, Rashtrava. This is really Krishna consciousness, which was established by Brahma himself. So, Narad, Dyas, Sukadeva all they are a charge of Krishna consciousness, a real force, Krishna consciousness there. And after that, Jiva Goswami was the prominent acharya of Krishna consciousness. I saw a book uh, today. Here, yeah. oh, Shri Gorgobind Maharaj has written this book. I think that no one of his own has written this, but he has written very clearly that Swamiji has not established Krishna consciousness, but actually, who is the establisher? Shiva, Brahma. I think that he is also disciple. So Krishna is root of all Guru Jagat Guru. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is there. So, it is coming from Krishna, so Krishna consciousness. So Swamiji is not an establisher of this, but he is one of the prominent acharya in this line. So we should realize all these things. So Jiva Goswami, after Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami, he spread our whole world the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he made so many books so that there should be no contamination, anything in or uh, amalgamate. Uh, there should not come any kushiddhanti in this. So he has written these six sandarvas and also sarva sambhadi. And they have told something about this. Today is about eight. So we can say something tomorrow in morning.